a silent friend. For centuries, it gave life to Earth. Its energy fed our forests, warmed our oceans, grew our food, lit our skies. We never questioned it because it gave, it gave, it gave. But what if that lifeline held a secret? What if the very force that makes life possible could also make the Earth break? In our last video, we explored how solar flares could disrupt modern life, how NASA-backed research revealed risks to our satellites, our grids, our way of life. Most people never heard about it. Until one day, they will. Today, we're asking a deeper question. Could the sun itself trigger earthquakes? A few days ago, we noticed something. A massive coronal hole opened on the sun, facing Earth. High-speed solar winds, over 600 kilometers per second, rushed toward us. We remembered a recent, still unreviewed study from Japan. It quietly suggested solar energy could weaken shallow faults, making them more likely to slip. But it wasn't peer-reviewed yet. We didn't want to cause alarm without proof. So we waited, and then an earthquake struck just two days after the solar winds touched Earth. Exactly the window the study had proposed. This isn't random. 2025 is the peak of solar cycle 25, a time when the sun becomes wild and unpredictable. Sunspots cluster, flares explode, Coronal holes open again and again. Space weather agencies, including NOAA and NASA, warned 2025 would be a year of storms. Now we're seeing it happen. The Japanese study explained how solar heat could subtly change Earth's surface, heating rocks, changing underground water movement, making shallow faults more brittle, not deep faults, only the fragile ones, the faults closest to the surface, the ones running beneath our cities. Combine that with plasma drops, electromagnetic disruptions, and the timing becomes crucial. It's not that the sun causes earthquakes, but it could nudge a fault already ready to slip. Long before the Istanbul quake, some had already seen the signs. Science alert. SciTech Daily. News Karnataka. They reported it too. Solar flares and coronal holes may silently set off earthquakes, especially when faults are already primed. The pieces were already there, waiting, stacking up. It's not proof but it's no longer nonsense either. Based on the solar patterns we're tracking and the cycle of returning coronal holes, two windows stand out. May 18 to 20, June 14 to 16. Both months show a high chance of solar storms, 600 to 730 kilometers per second winds. G1 to G2 geomagnetic activity if the Japanese study and other emerging theories are correct, these solar events could increase the chances of shallow earthquakes, especially in places like Turkey, along the North Anatolian Fault, Japan, near the Nankai Trough, and the U.S. West Coast, Cascadia, San Andreas. It's not a prediction, it's not certain, but it's plausible and it's worth watching. The question isn't if May or June will matter. The question is whether it's one or both. Because when the sun enters its stormiest season, storms don't wait, they build, they stack, 
they trigger. Historically, during high solar years like 1999, major quakes struck months apart. We could see a similar pattern now. Big shifts don't start with explosions, they start with a flicker, a plasma drop, a strange stillness, and then the Earth moves. Not because it's angry, not because it's random, because it simply can't hold still anymore. Most will scroll past, they always do, but you stayed, you listened, you questioned, and that matters. This isn't about fear, it's about seeing patterns before they turn into headlines. Because yesterday's nonsense might just be tomorrow's Nobel Prize. Some may call it crazy, we call it curiosity. Every breakthrough starts when someone dares to ask, what if we're wrong? What if we're right? Stay curious, stay bold and never stop questioning, because that's how progress begins. <laughs>